Hi everybody and welcome to another unit, which is Rational Expressions and Equations. Our first section in this unit is about simplifying rational expressions. We'll remember what the word rational means when we talked about number groups, like when we talked about whole numbers, integers, rational, irrational. If you remember what a rational number is, it's a number that can be written as a fraction. So, if we're looking at rational expressions, it's a, come on here, polynomial divided by a polynomial. So basically we're looking at um, algebraic expressions divided by itself, not itself, but another one, sorry. Your denominator can equal zero, which that wouldn't even make sense because you can't divide by zero. So for this whole unit, we will assume that we will never have zero in the denominator because it couldn't be solved. So a rational expression is in simplest form if the numerator and the denominator have no common factors except one. And that makes sense just for a regular rational number, like five fourths. That's a rational number, and that is simplified because five and four don't have anything in common except one. An example of what these rational expressions look like is one like this. z plus 5 divided by 10z. No, you cannot cross out the two z's here because this z is being added to the 5, and this z down here is being multiplied by 10. So I can't just say, hey, those are gone. Nope. You cannot touch the one that's in a binomial. This is a group. They stay together. All right. So I'm going to show you three examples that are like your homework tonight. So the first one is one like this. Your numerator is the polynomial 6x plus 12, and the denominator is the polynomial x plus 2. So your first step, if you can, is to try to factor. So your numerator, what goes into 6x and 12? Hopefully you're going to tell me 6. So you're going to factor out a 6 in your numerator, and you're going to be left with x plus 2. The denominator, that cannot be factored. So I will leave that as x plus 2. So look, you have the quantity x plus 2 in the numerator and quantity x plus 2 in the denominator. Anything over itself equals 1. And I am just left with 6 over 1, which is 6. That's my answer. Number 2, another one like your homework. So again, you want to try to factor. So looking in your numerator, 2x and a negative 12. You want to factor out a 2. So you'd be left with x minus 6. And then here are your factoring skills. I told you these are going to keep coming into play. You need to find factors of 6 that give you negative 7. So I think we're going to say a negative 6 and a negative 1. Because negative 6 times negative 1 is 6. Negative 6 plus 1 is negative 7. Look what the top and bottom have in common. x minus 6 x minus 6, those cross out to just 1, anything over itself is 1. In the numerator, you're left with 2. In the denominator, you're left with x minus 1. That's your answer. And last one, it's a pretty quick lesson today. Again, your numerator, you can take out a 5, and you'd be left with x minus 3. Now down here, when you go to factor this, this is the difference, because you're subtracting, of two perfect squares. So this would factor into, you'd have a 3 and a 3 to get 9, and then a negative x and a positive x. So you might say, well, I, I have an x minus 3 in the numerator, and this almost looks like it. How could I get these to look the same? Here the x is positive, here it's negative, here the 3 is negative, here it's positive. So let me show you one way you can go about to simplify this. Basically, what you're saying to yourself, if you see that, is that you need to switch the signs. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor a negative 1 just out of this term. So if I take a neg 3 and divide by negative 1, that becomes a negative 3. And if I take a, neg a negative x, divide by negative 1, that becomes a positive x. I didn't touch this one. Okay, I'm some of you might be able to see it, but I'm just going to rewrite it. This is really x minus 3. And so now, same things, they cancel out. So you're left with 5 over, and I'll just write negative parenthesis. It's important you keep the parenthesis. 
3 plus x. That's one way to write it. And that is a valid answer. Um, up here, just to show you another way you could have done it, again, take out the 5. And down here, you could have said, well, I like to have the x squared be a positive term. So I'm going to factor out that negative right away and change it to that. Some of you might prefer it like this. So then that negative 1, that negative just comes, uh, actually this should have been a subtract 9, I apologize. So now I'm factoring x squared minus 9, which just is x minus 3, x plus 3. Those guys cancel, and you get the same answer, probably with a little bit of a less headache. So rule of thumb, if you like what I just did, if you ever have the squared term as a negative, just factor out a negative 1 and bring that along with you in your answer. So that's it. I hope you find tonight's homework pretty easy. Um, let me know if you have questions.